Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is such an exciting video. I'm gonna show you some books that are perfect for journal prompt inspiration. I'm actually gonna split it up into two parts because there are quite a few books that I wanna show you. And I think journaling is such a perfect summer activity where you can just journal on the beach and with some friends in a park, having a little picnic. But I also love doing it in the winter, cozied up in bed. And that's just an activity that I've been doing a lot lately. I think journaling is beneficial to literally anyone. I love to journal because it really helps me to process my emotions. You can have a different journal for different uses. You can have a gratitude journal, a manifestation journal. You can have a journal that's full of positive things like affirmations or compliments that you receive, or you document all of your really great experiences and I think there's just so many uses for journaling but you might have some trouble starting and that's totally okay you can always find free journal prompts online other than online resources I'm going to be showing you some books that I think are perfect to get your creative juices flowing so that you can get that pen on paper and these are books that have explicit questions but they also just generate a deeper sense of reflection. They incite a lot of divine inspiration to get you to write and really just think about your life and your goals and your values. The first book is called Don't Believe Everything You Think by Joseph Nguyen. This is such a very thin, quick and easy read. I brought this with me to Guatemala because it's the thinnest book that I have and I did not have room to bring a thicker, heavier book. But this was such a great book to read on vacation and just in general because I am such an overthinker and this is exactly why I was drawn to this book. The main argument of the book is that the root cause of our suffering is thinking. So the book is structured in ways that really bring out a binary. For example, Joseph Nguyen, the author, talks about thoughts versus thinking and the difference between the two. He also goes into the goals that we set. So he talks about how goals are either set with divine inspiration or out of desperation. And that ties into the scarcity versus abundance mindset, where if we're creating goals out of desperation, we are in a place of lack. When we create goals simply just because we want to, simply because we're passionate and we enjoy it, not because we feel like we need to, we have this divine inspiration to create and that is in a place of abundance. So we basically feel like life is already so full and what we're doing is simply just like in addition to our glass already full. For the most part, it really puts you in a deep mode of reflection and in that reflection, you can generate questions to ask yourself and those questions can be used for your journal prompts. So after you finish the book, at the very end, there is a summary of the entire book and in the summary they have more reflection questions there are also other more organized reflection prompts like for example this one on page 110 asks you to organize things into categories so you have physical health physical environment digital environment and digital consumption and under each category there's a question so for example with digital consumption it asks what media makes you more prone to experience a fight or flight response. So basically what media do you consume that makes you feel anxious or stressed or lead you to overthink? And similarly, it asks questions about what media helps you feel more aligned with your highest self. So you can definitely use these questions and organize it in the same format that they put at the back of the book in your journal. So everything is in this neat order. But again, your journal is however you want it to be. And this is definitely great inspiration. The next book is called Master Your Emotions by Thibaut Neruse. I'm not sure how to pronounce this author's full name. I totally butchered that. But I really enjoyed this book because it gave such amazing practical advice. And I also love the way it was organized. The first part talks about what emotions are. The second part is 
what impacts your emotions. Part three talks about how to change your emotions. And lastly, part four is how to use your emotions to grow. So there are many different chapters in those parts and the book is organized in a very structured way where there are bullet points. At the end of each chapter, there's an exercise or action step that is often filled with some sort of thing that you need to do or a question that you should answer to really gain the most out of the book. This book covers a lot of different topics like jealousy, procrastination, stress, fear. There's this four step process to let go of your emotions and it includes a list of questions for you to ask yourself. And like I mentioned, after each chapter, there is a section that says action step and they comprise of different exercises and questions to ask yourself. And those same questions are also at the very back in the appendix. The next book is called The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. And this book is basically about body image and radical self-love. So not only are we in this journey to accept our bodies, but there's also this goal to really celebrate our bodies, embrace them, and love them in such a radical way. I also really like the structure of this book. So each chapter will have a radical reflection and also an unapologetic inquiry. So the radical reflections are shaded like this in a box. And there's also another a little box called unapologetic inquiry, which are basically reflection questions. So in this chapter, shame, guilt, and apology on page 47, under the subheading buying to be enough, the radical reflection talks about our relationship with money and how it often mirrors our relationship with our bodies. And the question underneath says, when was the last time you made a purchase because you didn't feel good enough? And did the purchase change how you felt? If so, how and for how long? So I think that's such an important thing to reflect on, especially in this age of self-love where we see people having self-love days and routines and rituals. In reality, self-love is more than just a spa day or getting your nails done or paying to go to a fancy dinner or see a movie. There are a lot of free self-care things you can do, self-love things that you can do, such as journaling. And I think that is just one of the amazing things that I love about journaling. It's low cost and you can do it anytime, anywhere. So each chapter will have more than one of these little boxes. So there are a ton of different reflection questions in a single chapter alone. So what's nice about that is that after each chapter, you can do the journaling and reflection questions as you go, or you can finish the entire book and combine all the questions into one giant list and then refer back to that giant list as you journal whenever you feel like it. Next up, we have 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think by Brianna Weiss. I think that's how you pronounce her last name, but I absolutely love this book. I read it in a time that I really needed to read something like this to motivate myself, to feel comforted, and to get a sense of direction in my life. This book is in this video because this book really helps spark a lot of questions to reflect on. And there are a couple chapters that are specifically just questions. This chapter is called 16 questions that will show you who you are and what you're meant to do. Page 289 is also a chapter that is just questions. It says 30 questions you need to ask yourself if you still haven't found the relationship you want. So in this chapter, it asks, what does love mean to you? Are you thinking about your love life more than you're actually living it? Are you aware of what your needs are in a long-term relationship? Those questions you can simply copy word for word and answer in your own journals. Overall, I think this book is filled with a lot of words of wisdom that are worth reflecting on and also journaling about. From that same author, we have the book, When You're Ready, This Is How You Heal. I've gotten some friends to get this. One of my friends is reading this right now and she's loving it. I mentioned this book in a previous video about 
breakup books, so I'll link that video down below. But I do recommend things like journaling when you're going through a very tough time like a breakup. So instead of contacting that person, you can definitely go no contact and journal instead, like writing letters to them that you would respond but not actually send to them. And just how you feel during this healing process, this self-transformation journey. And that's why I really like this book. And when I read this, it really helped me to think back on my life, my decisions, and where my life is headed, and how I choose to heal. So unlike the 101 Essays one, there aren't that many chapters on specific questions. This one says nine questions that will help you make the most of every day. So it has questions like, what would my best self do today? What can I do better today than yesterday? What small step can I take today to fix a big problem? And more. There are different exercises. Like for example, it says write down on a piece of paper what your mission is. And there's an example of how you would write a mission. And then there are other exercises. There's eight different points on ground rules for moving on from a relationship. And point number seven asks you to write everything you wanted and needed this person to be for you. So throughout this book, there are definitely little tidbits where you can use that as an opportunity to write in your journal. So it may not be a specific question. It may just instruct you to write down something sort of like an exercise. But I do think this has been such a key tool for my healing journey. And I do want to read it again because it's been over a year now or pretty much exactly a year now since I last read this. The last book I'm gonna to share today is called Lighter by Young Pueblo. He also wrote two different poetry collections, Inward and Clarity and Connection, which I both really liked. But this book, my friend gave me, shout out to Christina. And as you can see from the top, it says, let go of the past, connect with the present and expand the future. I think this is such a great intro book to basically a healing journey and i wish i had this sooner but this is a new release i think it was like at the end of last year when this book was released this book is very well organized and it's very straightforward so personally for me reading this wasn't entirely new information but i do love the way that he worded it and it was just sort of like a nice reminder for me so if you are someone who is new to this self-help journey, this self-transformation journey, and you aren't really exposed to that in other forms of media, then reading this will be more eye-opening for you, I assume. But even though I came into this with a lot of information already and coming so far along in my healing journey, I think I still got a lot out of this. And the main thing that I really enjoyed is that at the end of each chapter, there are a list of reflection questions for each topic so for example at the end of this first chapter which is on healing there are a list of reflection questions so it asks things like are you in touch with your emotional history what parts of you need healing do you see the connection between your past and the way you impulsively react what i've done already is i literally like copy and paste the exact question and put it on a word document so that i can look back at it in the summer and i have it on my phone easy to access and i can just journal whenever i feel like it so right now we're at the table of contents and some of the main topics are on self-love obviously healing letting go finding your practice emotional maturity relationships challenges during healing so i had been reading this at the beach and it has been such a great experience just being out in the sun. The weather's been so nice. Reading a healing book in such a healing place for me has really just made my day and that's why I'm so happy. <laughs> so these were all the books that I wanted to share with you today. I said I was going to make a part two and most of the books in this video are definitely geared toward a micro focus. So very individual, internal work but the other books are definitely geared toward a more macro focus 
where there are relationships involved, friendships, and also bigger systems and reflecting on those. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next video on these Healing Hot Girl Summer books.